The Atlantic Film Festival continues in Halifax, and we're very pleased to be joined in Saltwire Studio today by Molly McGlynn. Molly, uh, your film, Fitting In, at the festival. Uh, what can you tell us about Fitting In? Fitting In is a semi-autobiographical film that I'm calling a tromedy, um, based on uh, a reproductive condition called MRKH syndrome when I was 16. And when I didn't get my period at 16, uh, I went to the doctor and found out that I have this syndrome, which meant that I don't uh, have a uterus, I'll never get my period, and having sex was going to be difficult without some intervention, which is uh, what we explore in this film in a way that's um, painful, funny, absurd, um, you know, the audience may learn some things, but it's not a preachy or sort of educational film. I wanted to make uh, an enjoyable film. I want to ask you about the term traumedy in a second, but before that, I know for many, uh, the last thing you want to do is really look back at your teen years and try to remember what that was like. For you, why was it important to tell this story? As you mentioned, semi-autobiographical. Why did you want to tell this? Um, you know, there's that saying, uh, the specificity of our um, voice as storytellers makes a more universal story. And this is a rare opportunity I have as a filmmaker to tell um, a very specific story that, while it's largely informed by my own experience, I think a lot of people will relate to this. Um, really themes of just... Uh, you know, who we present to the world um, versus who we are inside, um, how gender and sexuality and all of that can be messy for a lot of people, but it's uh, exaggerated when you're diagnosed with this syndrome. The main character played by Maddie Ziegler, uh, playing the role of someone who's 16 years old. What was it like working with Maddie and, and how was she able to bring your character to life on screen? Um, working with Maddie was truly one of the highlights of my career. Um, she just dove headfirst into this role. It was not an easy role. There's um, a tremendous amount of vulnerability required um, of her, and she was so brave. She was um, really modeled for me what it means to be brave, and I had so much respect to her for embodying this story. Um, she comes from a dance background. She uh, was in the spotlight very young from being on uh, Dance Moms, which I didn't really see. Uh, and then she was in Sia's music videos and started to act in the past few years. But I think her experience as a dancer really uh, lent itself perfectly to this role because so much of what teenagers in crisis uh, you know, convey is uh, in an expression or a tone, you know, it's very subtle. And I think her work as a dancer uh, means that she was so good at communicating even when there was no dialogue. Next one is a kind of a twofold reaction question. Filmmakers always want to know what the audience reaction is. But let me ask you first, when you saw the finished edited product that you were ready to release, as this was semi-autobiographical, what was your reaction when you watched it as you were kind of watching your life? completely absurd and strange and like surely there must be cheaper forms of therapy available you know <laughs> um but when we finished it in toronto in december i walked out of the post house and um, it hit me it was nine months from when i started prepping the film to when we finished it and it was like this here's my baby you know um it's tremendously emotional but uh you know it is my film baby and now sending it off to university and like I, I gave you everything I could do just you know be good out there and now audience reaction I know that this is screened in Toronto and before we started recording this you mentioned that you had some relatives watches but what about audience reaction audience reaction has been incredible um I my fiance actually took a photo after the second screening at TIFF a few days ago, and it was this teen couple just curled up embracing each other, crying after the screening. Um, and he was like, I lost it looking at their reaction, and I got a beautiful message from her. Um, and to me, you know, people review films and go online and say what they will, but for me, for an audience member who has not had my experience in the world, who feels seen is the most beautiful, meaningful thing I could ask for as a filmmaker. 
And you mentioned the term traumedy earlier. And when I was doing some research on the film, that word was there. And I thought to myself, I don't know if that I've ever heard or seen that term before. Did you come up with that yourself? And how is this a traumedy? Um, I don't think I came up with the term. I believe the creator of the uh, series Dead to Me did. So I can't uh, claim that. But um, it, it just feels like the perfect term for this. It's... Um, humor born out of trauma. Um, and, you know, my own experience in my own life was uh, certainly not as funny all the time as uh, I convey in the film. Um, but with time, I'm able to see the humor in it. And also, humor is how I've coped throughout my life. Um, it's, it's just, you know, in my darkest moments, I'll see the most absurd thing in the room. And, you know, and like that's kind of the memory I come back to. And um, I just wanted to make a film that the audience felt pulled into and entertained by, as well as being asked to think, because, um, you know, this is a topic that maybe without humor, it may feel a little unapproachable or unaccessible. Last thing I'll ask you is you know, I've got kids, I've got a teenage daughter. Um, this goes back, you know, to what appeared in your life uh, about 20 years or so ago. But how cognizant were you of making sure that the language that the teenagers in the film were using kind of resonated and connected with teens in 2023? Yeah, uh, getting the sort of teen vernacular was so important to me making this film. And of course, it's change changing so quickly now, especially with social media. Um, spent a lot, lot of time on TikTok. Um, but, you know, just an important part of being a filmmaker is when you're out in the world is to, you know, take your he your headphones off, listen, look at the world around you, get a sense of the, the dialogue and the cadence. Um, and also, I had a young cast, so I was like, if anything feels like a 30-something woman wrote this, <laughs> please tell me. So, yeah. And... We talked about TIFF, you're at the Atlantic International Film Festival now, but beyond this, where can audiences find your film? Uh, the film will be out theatrically in North America in November, so you will be able to see it in movie theaters as well. Um, and I just am so grateful for that opportunity. I really encourage people to seek it out, um, tell their friends, bring your kids to it, um, bring your teenage sons to it as well. There's like Truly, um, you know, it's not just for teenage girls. It's for parents. It's for um, teen boys. I've some of the most surprising and emotional feedback is from men, like people I just didn't expect. Um, so please support the film. Well, Molly McGlynn, thank you for fitting in with us here <laughs> at Saltwater today, and look forward to seeing fitting in uh, when it gets its theatrical release. Continued success. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.